Eight Feet Tall, or Hachisakusama, is a Japanese urban legend about a tall woman who abducts children. She is eight feet tall, wears a long white dress, and makes a sound like My grandparents lived in Japan. Every summer, my parents would take me on holiday to visit them. They lived in a small village, and they had a big backyard. I always loved to play there during the summer. When we arrived, my grandparents always welcomed me with open arms. I was their only grandchild, so they spoiled me. The last time I saw them was the summer when I was eight years old. As usual, my parents booked a flight to Japan, and we drove from the airport to my grandparents' house. They were delighted to see me and had a lot of little presents to give me. My parents wanted some time by themselves, so after a few days, they took a trip to another part of Japan, leaving me in the care of my grandma and grandpa. One day, I was playing outside in the backyard. My grandparents were inside the house. It was a hot summer's day, and I lay down on the grass to rest. I stared up at the clouds and enjoyed the feeling of the soft rays of sun and the gentle breeze. Just as I was about to get up, I hear a strange sound. I didn't know what it was, and it was hard to figure out where the sound was coming from. It almost was like someone was making the noise themselves, as if they were just saying, Po, 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 over and over again in a deep, masculine voice. I was looking around searching for the source of the noise, when I suddenly noticed something on the top of the tall hedges that enclosed the backyard. It was a straw hat. It wasn't resting on the hedge, it was behind it. That's where the sound was coming from. Then, the hat began to move, as if someone was wearing it. The hat stopped at a small gap in the hedge and I can see a face peering through. It was a woman, but the hedges were high, almost eight feet tall. I was surprised at how tall the woman was. I wondered if she was wearing stilts or some sort of high-heeled shoes. Then, a split second later, she walked off and the strange noise disappeared with her, fading into the distance. Bewildered, I got up and wandered back into the house. My grandparents were in the kitchen drinking tea. I sat down at the table, and after a while, I told my grandparents what I had seen. They weren't really paying attention to me, until I mentioned that distinctive sound. As soon as I said that, both of them suddenly froze. Grandma's eyes grew wide and she covered her mouth with her hand. Grandpa's face became very serious, and he grabbed me by the arm. This is very important, he said, in an intense voice. You must tell us exactly how tall was she. As tall as the garden hedge, I replied, beginning to get scared. My grandfather bombarded me with questions. Where was she standing? When did this happen? What did you do? Did she see you? I tried to answer all of his questions as best as I could. He suddenly rushed out to the hallway and made a phone call. I couldn't hear what he was saying. I looked over at my grandma and she was trembling. Grandpa came barging back in, back into the room, and spoke to my grandmother. I've got to go out for a while, he said. You stay here with the child and don't take your eyes off of him for a second. What's going on, Grandpa? I cried. He looked at me with a sad expression in his eyes and said, You've been liked by Hachi Sakusama. With that, he hurried out, got into his truck, and drove off. I turned to my grandmother and cautiously asked, Who is Hachi Sakusama? Don't worry. 
she replied in a shaking voice. Grandpa will do something. There's no need to worry. As we sat nervously in the kitchen waiting for my grandfather to come back, she explained what was happening. She told me that there was a dangerous thing that was haunting in the area. They called it Hachisakusama because of its height. In Japanese, Hachisakusama roughly translates to 8 feet tall. It takes on the appearance of an extremely tall woman and makes a sound like po 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 in a deep male voice. It appears slightly differently depending on who sees it. Some say it looks like a haggard old woman in a kimono, and others say it's a girl in a white funeral shroud. One thing that never changes is its height and the sound it makes. A long time ago, it was captured by monks and they managed to confine it in a ruined building on the outskirts of the village. They trapped it using four small religious statues called chisos. They placed it at the north, south, east, and west ends of the ruins. It wasn't supposed to be able to move from there, but somehow, it managed to escape. The last time it appeared was 15 years ago. My grandmother said that anyone who saw 8 feet tall was destined to die within a few days. It all sounded so crazy I wasn't sure what to believe. Grandpa finally came back. He brought an old woman with him. She introduced herself as Kei-san and handed me a small crumpled piece of parchment saying here, take this and hold it. Then she and grandpa went upstairs to do something. I was left alone in the kitchen with my grandma once again. I needed to use the bathroom. She followed me there but wouldn't let me shut the door. I was beginning to get really afraid by all of this. After a while, Grandpa and Kei-san took me upstairs and brought me into my bedroom. The windows were covered in newspaper and lots of ancient runes had been written on them. There were small bowls of salt in all four corners of the room and a small Buddha figure placed in the center of the room on top of a wooden box. There was also a bright blue bucket. What's the bucket for? I asked. That's for you to pee and poo, Grandpa replied. Kei-san sat me down on the bed and said, Soon the sun will be setting. So listen carefully. You must stay in your room until tomorrow morning. You must not come outside under any circumstances until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Your grandmother and your grandfather will not speak to you or call you until then. Remember, do not leave the room for any reason until then. I will let your parents know what's going on. She spoke in such a grave tone that all I could do was quietly nod my head. You have to follow Kei-san's instructions to the letter, Grandpa told me. And never let go of that parchment she gave you. And if anything happens, pray to Buddha. And make sure you lock this door when we leave. They walked out into the hallway and after saying goodbye to them, I closed the bedroom door and locked it. I turned on the TV and tried to watch, but I was so nervous, I felt sick to my stomach. Grandma had left some snacks and rice balls for me, but I couldn't eat them. I felt like I was in prison. I was depressed and scared. I lay down on the bed and waited, and before I knew it, I was asleep. When I woke up, it was just after 1 a.m., all of the sudden I realized that something was tapping on the window. I felt the blood draining from my face and my heart skipped a beat. I desperately tried to calm myself down by telling me it was just the wind playing tricks or maybe the branches of a tree. I turned up the volume on the TV to drown out the tapping noise and eventually, it stopped altogether. That was when I heard Grandpa calling me. Are you okay in there? He asked. If you're scared, you don't have to stay in there all alone. I can come in and keep you company. I smiled and rushed over to open the door, but then I stopped in my tracks. I had goosebumps all over my body. It sounded like Grandpa's voice, but somehow 
it was different. I couldn't tell what it was, but I, I just knew. What are you doing? Grandpa asked. You can open the door now. I glanced to my left and a chill went down my spine. The salt in the bowls were slowly turning black. I backed away from the door. My whole body was trembling with fear. I fell to my knees in front of the Buddha statue and clutched the piece of parchment, tightly in my hand. I started desperately praying for help. Please, save me. Please save me from Hachisuka-sama. Please. And then I heard the voice outside the door. The tapping on the window started up again. I was overcome by fear and I crouched in front of the statue half crying and half praying for the rest of the night. I felt like it would never end. But eventually it was morning. The salt in all four bowls were pitch black. I checked my watch. It was 7.30 a.m. I cautiously opened the door. Grandma and Kei-san were standing outside waiting for me. When she saw my face, Grandma burst into tears. I'm so glad you're alive, she said. I went downstairs and was surprised to see my father and mother sitting in the kitchen. Grandpa came and said, hurry up, we've got to get going. Went to the front door, and there was a large black van waiting in the driveway. Several men from the village were standing around it, pointing at me and whispered, saying, that's the boy. The van was a nine-seater. They put me in the middle, surrounded by eight men. Kei-san was in the driver's seat. The man on my left looked down at me and said, You've got yourself in quite a spot of trouble. I know you're probably worried. Just keep your head down and your eyes shut. We can't see it, but you can. Don't open your eyes until we've got you safely out of here. Grandpa drove the car in front, and my dad's car was following behind. When everyone was ready, our little convoy started moving. We were going fairly slow, around 20 kilometers per hour, or maybe less. After a while, Kei-san said, This is where it gets hard, and started muttering a prayer underneath her breath. That's when I heard the voice. I clutched the parchment Kei-san had given me tightly in my hand. I kept my head down, but I peeked outside. I saw a white dress fluttering in the breeze. It was moving along with the van. It was Hachisaku-sama. She was outside the window, but she was keeping pace with us. And then, suddenly she bent down and peered into the van. No, I gasped. The man beside me shouted, Close your eyes! I immediately shut my eyes as hard as I could and tightened my grip around the piece of parchment. And then the tapping began again. The voice became louder. There was tapping on all of the windows around us. All the men in the van were startled and on edge, muttering nervously to themselves. They couldn't see eight feet tall and they couldn't hear her voice, but they could hear her tapping on the windows. Kei-san started praying louder and louder until she was almost shouting. The tension inside the van was unbearable. Please, is anyone listening?